this is what you've kind of all been waiting for in terms of this entire section for financial planning. Okay, let's assume we set everything up, everything's connected, we have everything ready to go. We know our personality, we kind of understand a little bit about our risk tolerance that we're willing to take. What do we do? How do we actually invest? Great question. I personally believe in high conviction investing. And what that really means is I'm going to put a large sum of money into one investment or one particular asset class or one particular project because I know it is such a great business. It's such a great project. It's such a fantastic application of money that it's going to do well. I've studied it so deeply that I know with full conviction, this is going to pan out. It may not happen tomorrow, but within the span of the next, let's say, whatever your time horizon is, that you know that that's what's going to happen. Because the market forces are just in that favor of whatever project, business, whatever it is. That's basically the key. And the only way to do that is by reading up on, in this case, if we're talking stocks, the company, the company itself, the financials, looking at the debt, looking at who are the innovators in that field, understanding the landscape of what the projection for the next two to 10 years, if that's your time horizon, that's doing the work and spending the time reading the projections, reading the, the K-10s, sorry, listening to the CEO, reading shareholder letters, understanding what they've done in the past when things haven't gone their way versus when things have. What kind of CEO do we have if it's a wartime versus peace CEO? All of these kinds of questions are ones that you have to ask thoroughly and with complete conviction of understanding where the market's going. You need to be hyper-focused in figuring out what kind of trade you want to be behind of if that's the kind of thing we're doing. So if we're doing this in a Roth IRA, it's not a lot of money, realistically. It's if you can do it, $6,000 a year. $6,000 a year on the S&P 500 over the next 30 years, it's nothing to write home about. If, however, you're applying this $6,000 into something that has the potential to be the next Amazon, the next Tesla, something like that, a company that ideally, right, this would be ideal, has no debt, has most of the market share in their back pocket. If not, they are the ones who are the market leaders. Um, if you can see that the, the market price, ideally, doesn't quite understand what the business is, and so it's very cheap, so it's misrepresented in terms of its pricing, an investment like that, that could 10x that money that is consistently done, let's say over a span of five to 10 years, that can transform your retirement. That's just one thing, okay? One thing to consider with that kind of an account. If you wanna be a little bit more conservative and you're dealing with something more on like a SEP and you're maximizing the SEP at $61,000 in this case for this year, what you would rather do, right, is, assuming you're being conservative, could be something like the S&P 500, could be something even more conservative, like just buying TLT, which is long treasury um, bonds. That's 
that's as conservative as, as, as you can get. You can even buy shorter term ones. You can, hell, you can do CDs. <laughs> I mean, in that sense, that's a good option because this is capital that has been created from a business that is profits, right? That you are wanting to keep. And so the way that you are treating it is a little bit different. Or you could be on the extreme where I know somebody who uses crypto as part of their uh, entire banking system, right? Of how they, they manage the business and the business account. So they don't want to have a, a split percentage in cash in comparison to crypto. That could be something that you might want to do maybe even on a retirement end for some people who are really into the Web3 and things of that nature. That's not for everyone, but if you get into larger sums of money, like a defined benefit plan at $250,000, or let's say you are doing something like a 412 where there's like insurance and annuities and you have a choice for a certain portion of the money of how you want it to be invested, uh, you can be very conservative and say, only treasury bonds. That's another safe strategy. That's using the high conviction model, right? I wouldn't say be loosey goosey and have portions of everything. That's probably not a good bet to know what it is. Cause I've seen some of the insides of, of some of these higher end defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans and the options aren't as um, crystal clear as you can see when you're buying, let's say an ETF, right? They have options like the S&P 500, they have options like um, something that models the NASDAQ, things of that nature, right? I personally, when, I'm, when it comes to those kinds of products, would prefer dealing with the government as much as possible, so treasuries. But that's in my own opinion. <laughs> the point here with high conviction investing, if you want another analogy to think about, is like a sniper. A sniper rifle only has a set number of bullets, doesn't have the same amount of uh, magazine capacity is other guns doesn't matter if you don't know anything about guns you're only gonna have a, sh a set number of shots to take and they better be effective um, in the real world when you are a sniper and you're doing this you're giving up your position similar in these ultra high net worth levels when you have somebody who you can consider, you know, a whale moving, it can it can stir the markets. You can see something's happening. So you need to make sure that when those happen, they are on target and they're gonna kill. They're gonna do everything that you expect. That's kind of the best way to frame investing, how to get your money in retirement planning how to start thinking long-term because if instead of thinking of purchasing, let's say we're thinking about real estate, for instance, instead of wanting to say, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to flip this instead, think I'm going to buy this and I'm going to hold this for as long as I can, if not forever that might change the way that you're going to plan on purchasing things. If the idea was to flip something, maybe the location doesn't matter as much. Maybe just because that market is currently really hot, that might be the place to do it. No, don't, don't do that. That's not what I'm recommending at all. I'm always saying, think about the longer term, buying the best kind of high quality assets. If we're thinking LA real estate, Think about those places that will always be first to mind when you think of Los Angeles. I probably don't even have to mention it. 
and these neighborhoods come to mind. The same thing with New York. Neighborhoods, boroughs, they'll come to mind. You'll know what I'm talking about. Those are those like completely, you don't have to have any kind of intelligence to know that is a smart place to buy. Those are the ones that you should be investing wholeheartedly, picking them up when they're at their ultimate lows, if you can. Otherwise, irrespective of, of price, they should be good buys. That's when you know what you're purchasing is completely worthwhile. I guess the last point would be after spending quite a bit of time with some entrepreneurs who are in the ultra high net worth categories, one of the things that I've noticed and they talk about is buying things to keep, not ever buying things to sell. Although many people want to push them to sell, never, never sell. That's not the plan. That's not why you purchase the assets in the first place. And I think keeping that mindset when you're purchasing anything uh, could not only be a more minimalist approach, uh, doing away with like, Diversification is the answer. It's not. It's finding great assets, stocks, businesses, real estate, you name it. Even with cars, watches, art, clothes, the things that have the most value tend to stay with that value. And I think you'll, you'll agree in your own life, you've probably noticed this. So if that seems to be the trend, the trend is your friend. Buy those high quality assets and stick with them. Do the research.